Okay. So a stone is dropped down a shaft 160 meters deep. Calculate A, the time taken for the stone to reach the bottom, and B, the velocity of the stone as it reaches the bottom. Assuming G, the gravitational constant, to be 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, good. So time taken for the stone to reach the bottom. Well, in terms of velocities and accelerations, time taking is the distance traveled, right, to reach the bottom. And that distance is 160 meters deep. So you can use this distance formula equal to ut plus half at squared. All right, good. So S, as I just said, is 160. Okay, 160. UT, remember it's dropped. So we drop it. So the initial velocity is zero because you just drop it. You didn't throw it down, you drop it. Initial velocity is zero and half AT squared. Acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81, half AT squared. Solving this for T, we get T is equal to the square root of 160 divided by 4.905. This 4.905 comes from 9.81 divided by two, or half of 9.81, okay? Plugging this into our calculator, we get the time taken to reach the bottom is 5.7111114 seconds, right? Any questions? No. All right. So next, the velocity of the stone as it reaches the bottom. So the velocity, okay? Because we're continuously accelerating as a result of gravity. Because we're continuously accelerating as a result of gravity, the end velocity will just be that acceleration by the time. Or we can use the old formula V is equal to U plus AT where u, we know, is zero. So v will be equal to a times t. The acceleration, again, is 9.81. The time is the time we just calculated, which is time it took for this stone being dropped down the shaft, right, to reach the bottom here, reach the bottom, that time, which we found is 5.7114 meters. Right, 5.7114 seconds. Multiplying that, we get V is equal to 56.03 meters per second. And that's the velocity. All right, good. So I assume you guys don't have any questions on that. So I'll just move on to number 22. Okay, so 22 is pretty similar again. A cricket ball thrown vertically upwards, thrown this time vertically upwards, Returns to the ground in four seconds. Calculate A, the height in meters reached by the ball. Height in meters. B, the velocity in meters per second with which it's thrown. So instead of being dropped this time, it's, it's thrown. So it has some sort of initial velocity, right? Okay. Calculate A, the height in meters, and B, the velocity. So first, let's look at the velocity with which it is thrown. So this ball, let's say some boy is down here on the ground. And he's throwing a ball. The ball goes up and back down. Now we're assuming a very ideal condition, right? So this here, the path upward, this length here, and this length 
back downward equal, right? So if it takes four seconds to go up and come down, the time here should be four divided by two, and the time here should be four divided by two as well, okay? Right, so two seconds to go up and two seconds to come back down, right? The reason for that is because acceleration, it's constant throughout. As we go up, we start at some initial velocity, right? And we're decelerating, we're decelerating here. And then at this point, velocity is set to be zero. And then we accelerate, but in the opposite direction, right? We accelerate in the opposite direction. So it's kind of like moving in terms of a graph. Let's do a velocity time graph. T, right? The initial velocity, some initial velocity V, or let's write as U. U is going to start at that and then slowly decelerate down to zero, which is this point here. Okay. Let's call this point A. And then it's going to accelerate as a result of the I have a question, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Um, this V is initial or um, final velocity? Uh, it's initial, but I use it interchangeably in the explanation, whichever I draw first, right? So V is usually referring to final, right? And U refers to initial. Right? So this 19.62 is initial. Uh, velocity with which it is shown, yeah, initial. Okay, sorry, thanks. Okay. Right. Good. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah, good. It's slowly decelerating, then it's gonna accelerate back up, right? To V. So because it's it's essentially symmetrical this way. I'm gonna find something weird. We're gonna find the initial velocity and the final velocity are the same, All right? So we can use our formula. V is equal to U plus AT. But again, this A is minus A, U minus AT. V, the final velocity at this point here is gonna be zero. Then we carry over minus U is equal to AT minus AT. So we just get U is equal to AT, right? U is equal to AT. Now, alternatively is, alternatively is the same way on this side of it, right? So for this side, we have V is equal to U here is going to be zero at this point A. Zero plus AT. So we have V is equal to AT. And since U and V these, these two points here, depending on which half we choose to analyze on, are gonna be the same, right? So the time in this case, which is really what we need to focus on, time is four seconds divided by two. So four divided by two is equal to two. So time is two seconds. That's the point of the entire explanation. I just explained that symmetry. So using that formula, V is equal to AT, or if you want to be more careful, you do U is equal to AT. Okay, Yane, go ahead. Yes, sir. Morning. Yeah. Um, what would this, right? In this example, right, we consider um, this 9.62 meters per second as the as the final velocity, right? It's right. the initial velocity and the final. They're they're both the same. 
what I was doing, and this is not nothing wrong with what you did neither, but what I was doing I was considering this as the initial velocity and the zooming to the second as the, um, as the final, if you are ascending. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. Okay, yeah, so, so what I was saying is that the velocity time graph is like this, right? You remember we go, we throw the ball up, then we come back down, right? So we start to sum u, right? And then we go to zero, zero here, and then we go back up, right? Because this, this here is a zero point. Let's call that a, a, and this here is final velocity v, and this is u, right? So v here. So if we break this down into like two, two problems and we analyze from this point, right? This u here is 19.62. But if we break down here on this point, right? V is 19.62, right? So it depends on which half of the graph you analyze it. And we need to say that u is equal to, right? Because it's symmetrical. Does that make sense? Perfect sensor. Good, u is equal to v, right? U equals V in this case, because it's symmetrical. All right. Okay. All right. So now the height in meters reached by the ball. So given that we know time and we know initial velocity now, the time in this ball, again, this guy here, throwing this ball up. The full path is four seconds. So the time to reach this stop here is going to be two seconds, right? Okay. So use the time as two. We know acceleration, right? Which is as a result of gravity. We know the initial velocity, u, which we just found, is equal to 19.62. So I'll change this for send the handout out to avoid confusion, right? 19.62. Plugging those into our formula, we get S is equal to 19.62 times two seconds, right? So write the magnitude formula, S is equal to UT plus half a T squared. U, 19.62, T, two seconds plus half A, right, minus 9.81, because we're continuously decelerating going up, right? Deceleration due to gravity on this half going up. Times T, which is two squared. So S is equal to 19.62 meters. All right, good, any questions? You just plug the values in to the formula. Yes, sir. I have a question, Kamraj. Go ahead. We got the distance as 19.62 meters. And yeah. And we found the height as 19.2. Could you please scroll up a little? We found the velocity as 19.62 meters per, per second. But, yeah. But yeah. that is in two seconds. Yeah. OK, good. That's, that's a good question. Let me, uh, maybe I can draw it right here. But let me open up paint. Paint 3D. Okay, so the reason that is, let's say we had something. Is it not working? Okay. All right, so let's just draw a velocity time graph. So time, velocity. Let's say velocity is 50 meters per second. Okay, good. And we travel that for two seconds, two seconds, right? So we're gonna be driving at 50 meters per second for two seconds. Great. The area under this is 50 
meters per second times two, right? Which is 100 meters, right? 50 by two, which is what you would expect. Now, the reason for the other one being 50 again in two seconds is because we started at 50 and we decelerated down to zero. So we're actually finding the area under a triangle instead of a square or a rectangle, right? We're decelerating down to zero, right? So we start at, let's use the real numbers now, 19.62, was it? 19.62, right? <laughs> and we decelerated down to zero. So we're not traveling at 19.62 consistently for two seconds. We're decelerating along the way. And we're decelerating uniformly down to zero, right? The velocity here is slowing down. At this point here, it's no longer 19.62, it's less than 19.62. And at this point here, it's zero. Close to here, it's very small, very small, much less than 19.62. And up here, it's zero. So we're not traveling 19.62 meters per second for, for two seconds. And because it's decelerating uniformly, we end up essentially being at this, essentially using for like one second, because it's like uniformly straight down. So that kind of works out to being half of this rectangle or the area under this triangle. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. So that answers your question. Great. All right. So since these questions are easy, you guys work 23, then I'll come back and we'll work 31 together. So give 23 a try, all right? A ball is thrown vertically upwards at 40 meters per second. Calculate A, the greatest height to attain. B, the time taken to return to the ground. Return to the ground. It's velocity after three seconds and after six seconds. And D, the distance traveled during the first second. Now, what you're gonna find is that this question asks for a lot of little things, but it's all still using the same formulas we've been using, right? Okay. So give it a try. And if you get any difficulties, let me know.
Okay, you guys got them through? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you stop, let me know. Okay, is anyone else finished? So, so do you, yes sir, do, exact, do exactly one more minute. Okay, good.
Okay, so yeah, as again, you just use the formulas for these questions, right? This one, use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2s. That's right, this one, because we don't have time available right away. So we just use the things we know. We know velocity, we know acceleration, right? Right, we know, we know at the greatest height, the final velocity is gonna be zero, right? Is that going up and coming back down there, right? So here's gonna be zero. Um, the next one, next part, time taken to return to the ground. So time taken to return to the ground, um, that's essentially just the time for half of, of the cycle going up and coming down, so for half. So you can find either one and the time will be the same, right? So final velocity is gonna be the same 40 meters per second. And then the initial velocity from here, it's gonna be zero, right? Zero plus acceleration, which is due to gravity 9.81 times T, which is our unknown that we need to find and solve that, right? And you should get 18.15 seconds. Um, for three seconds, velocity after three seconds, we just put the time in as three seconds and that's the same formula, right? So V is equal to U plus AT, but the initial velocity is 40, right? And then we substitute time as three and the six seconds. What's gonna happen is that after six seconds, is it six? Yeah, after six seconds, we're gonna get a negative number right, which is going to indicate that it's going in the opposite direction, right? Okay, good. Now, hmm. these questions and then the distance. Okay, and then for the last one, the distance traveled during the first three seconds, we use the other formula. S is equal to ut plus half at squared. You guys get these answers when you work them up? Right? Yes, sir. No issues? Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. The last one, right? Mm -hmm. What would be wrong with using the formula? S is equal to... Um... Half u plus v close bracket t. S is equal to half S open bracket u plus t. No, u, u plus v. V mm. divided by t. No, no, it's close bracket. Just close bracket. Close bracket. Okay. By T, yeah. T? Yeah. Where are you guys forming from? Is this just like a transposition of this? I tried some way when I didn't hand out. Does it work? It did work. I guess 60, but I started in hand out and, and I used it to get another one. Another answer before. Um, maybe this, this refers to some kind of averaging app like average distance or something, or I don't know, maybe it's some sort of averaging thing where we use the average velocity over time, right? So maybe it doesn't work for some reason. I can check it and get back to you, right? You Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Clarification sake. Um, here, no, this 7.5, 75.8 meter, right? This is the distance vertically. Distance travel during the first three seconds. Yeah. There's, yeah, this is vertically. Okay. Yeah. Well, so distance is gonna be 
distance, right? It's not displacement or anything like that. It's just distance, right? So it's going to go up and it's going to come down. Even when coming down, right, the distance is going to be adding on, right? So if it goes up to like greater side to 10 is A to 1.5. Theta 1.5. If we put time as e equaling to maybe 10 seconds, right? 10 seconds, right? It's going to still keep going on to like 90.5 and, and stuff like that. It's going to keep increasing. This is distance, right? Going up and down. Okay. So it's along the path and not displacement. Displacement is just the shortest distance between two points. If you go up and come down, it's going to start subtracting with displacement, but now it's our distance. So there's a key, uh, key difference. All right, I think it shouldn't be too hard. It's just like they all are the parts. But as long as you use the formulas, right, you should get the same answers. All right, so let's move on to the projectile question. So a shell is fired with a velocity of 600 meters per second in a direction inclined at 70 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate A, the horizontal and vertical components, of the velocity B, the greatest height above ground attained by the shell, and C, the horizontal distance traveled by the shell before it touches the ground. Assume the ground to be level and air resistance to be negligible. Okay. So let's just go through these two little things here. So assume the ground to be level. What that means is we don't want you thinking about unlevel ground. So we don't, we, don't, we don't want you thinking about something like a cannon here, right? Shooting out a shell. We wouldn't want you to think that there's some kind of crater here that would affect the distance we calculate. So we assume the ground to just be level, right? So straight, straight across, no kind of crater depth or some kind of hill. Right? That would that would cause it to not reach this level ground, right? So the ground to be level. Okay. Me, sir. Can you please go back that go that over back, please? So right here they say assume the ground to be level and your resistance to be negligible, right? So what that means is that we need to assume that the ground is level. So that if we fire something, right? It's gonna land on level ground that's like directly horizontal to this, right? So it's gonna land here. If you fire from here, it's gonna land here because the ground is level, right? Okay. Now, why they say that is because they don't want you thinking about something like this, like a crater that would add some kind of distance, like plus one or two distance, right? And right, because of some crater or some kind of mountain, right? That would give you like a plus, like a minus two to that distance, right? Like a minus two. And would affect it in some way. So we assume the ground to be level. So that's what that means. And air resistance to be negligible. Now, with vertical and horizontal components, right? Vertical and horizontal components. Generally, the vertical component is affected by gravity. So when we throw this ball up, it's going to decelerate, decelerate, level off at zero, and then it's going to come back down, right? When we fire this here, gravity affects it, causing it to go up, level off, right? And then come back down, right? Now, with the horizontal component, the X, what affects it is air resistance, right? Gravity doesn't affect it. So what, what causes this to go and then stop is air resistance. But by assuming air resistance is negligible, right? We don't need to worry about it. So we just worry about the effects of gravity, right? So air, air resistance is what causes it to slow down. So if we had no gravity, 
and we fired some bullet, right? The resistance is what we'll be fighting against it, causing it to slow down and then stop. And of course, you'd have no gravity, so it'd be some kind of just some some just stop in space, right? Floating around. But don't worry about all that, right? So just ignore your resistance. So the vertical and horizontal components. We remember from last semester, we can just use our trigonometric ratio, ratios, sine and cosine to break down an angular a velocity, any vector at an angle into its orthogonal components, vertical and horizontal. So something like, please give me a second. So we get so something like a vector at an angle, and in this case, the vector is velocity, six hundred meters per second per second, and the angle is seventy degrees. Break this down into vertical and horizontal components. That's called Vy and Vx, right? Vertical and horizontal. Or we can just look at it in terms of just a right angle triangle, right? Where this is Vy as well, right? Here is Vy, right? So using sine and cosine, Vy. 70, the opposite Vy is equal to 600 sine 70. Vx here, right? Right angle, Vx is equal to 70. 70, um, 600 cosine 70, Vx. Plugging these values into our calculators, we get that the horizontal component is 205.5. 212 meters per second, and the vertical component is 563.816 meters per second. Okay. Good. Now, we need to use both of them to figure out certain things. So when we think about height, which is part D of this question, greatest height attained, which one of the components are we gonna use? Well, we're gonna use the vertical component because the horizontal component doesn't contribute to height, that contributes the distance, horizontal distance travel. So greatest height. At the point of greatest height here, velocity is gonna be zero, right? Because again, it's gonna start off at some five, six, three. It's gonna decelerate, decelerate, decelerate down to zero. Here, some point A. Then it's going to accelerate in the opposite direction. Okay? Or continue decelerating this way. Depends on how you want to write your graph. Back to 563. Okay, good. So final velocity is zero because we're analyzing this half of the graph alone. Zero. So at that point is zero. U, U is the initial velocity and the initial horizontal component of that velocity. So the initial velocity is 600 meters per second. And the horizontal component of that is 563. So you put that in. Okay? Acceleration or deceleration as a result of gravity is 9.81. And S is the unknown, which is what we're trying to find. All right, good. Now, solving for S, we get 563.816 squared divided by 19.62. 19.62 is just 2 times 9.81, right? Plug this into the calculator, we're going to get 16,202.3 meters. Converting to kilometers, we get 16.2 kilometers. Now, one thing to note is that we didn't use minus 9.81 here, but you can just as easily use it and you'll still get the same answer, right? 
right? Because all that's going to happen is that here is going to have a negative sign and here is going to have a negative sign as well and they're going to cancel out, right? So you can put minus 19.81 there too, but it doesn't really make a difference, right? So the distance travel is 16.2 kilometers. Okay. Good. Now the time taken to reach the greatest height. Time taken to reach the greatest height. We know the final velocity is zero. We know u is 56, 563.816. Acceleration as a result of gravity and T is our unknown, right? So solving this, um, zero is equal to U plus AT. We get uh, minus U is equal to gravity, of course, is decelerating, so it's negative. So this is minus A, minus AT. Solving, right? Minus U. Minus U over minus A. Negative signs cancel out. Cancel out. And we just get u divided by a is equal to t. And that's what we use here. Right? Good. So u, 563.816 divided by 9.81. Plug that into a calculator, we get 57.47 seconds. And that's the time taken to integrate the site. Now, notice again that we use. 563.816 because horizontal component and the, um, the vertical component and vertical component is what deals with height. Vertical, height, right? Good. Now the next one, it's time taken for the full path. Okay, so Let's look back at the projectile. Here we have, let's clean this up a bit. Remove the word air resistance. So something is being launched, it's gonna go up and it's gonna come down, right? Now at this halfway point, we know the time taken to reach from here to here right, is the same as the time taken to reach from there to there. So if we can find the time taken to reach the greatest height, which is here, Py equals zero, if we can find this time, then we can multiply that by two and find the time taken from starting to end, the full path, the full trajectory, right? So the time taken to reach here, we just multiply that by two. That's the same going up and coming back down effect, right? Symmetrical. So we found that just now is 57.47 seconds. Multiplying that by two, we get 57.47 times two is equal to 114.94 seconds. And that's the time taken for the full path, right? Now, what's the horizontal distance travel, right? So horizontal distance travel, horizontal, we know we need to use Vx, right? Because horizontal distance travel, so therefore we need to use the horizontal component. Component. Right? So distance, we know distance, velocity by time is just distance. And remember, there is no initial and final velocity because a resistance, going all the way back up, a resistance is negligible, right? A resistance is negligible. So there isn't any external force decelerating this thing, right? So in an ideal world, if there wasn't any vertical component, if we were to launch this thing, directly horizontal in the ideal world without any air resistance, this shell would travel infinitely. But because it goes up and come down, comes down, because of its vertical component, it's going to stop when the vertical component 
causes it to crash down, right? Because of gravity pulling it down. Right? Good. But gravity, again, is only going to affect the vertical component. So that same Vx times the time, which is 114.94, the horizontal component is 205, back up from when we find it here. We had the horizontal distance travel is equal to 205.212 times 114.94 which is equal to 23.587 meters or 23.6 kilometers, right? And that's it. It answers all parts of the question, right? Um, A, horizontal and vertical components, good. Greatest height attained by the shell, good. And C, the horizontal distance traveled by the shell, good. So any questions on this one? And remember, this is the one that's gonna come in the test for Thursday or not this one exactly, but one very similar to it. Okay, good. Yeah, so any questions? Oh, sir. No, sir. Yeah. No? Sir. Sir? Yeah, go ahead. You can remember the same, the same, um, the same form of the table for you. I use it here, right? S is equal to half U plus D, T, mm -hmm. and um, and you get the, the greatest height of T. Here? Here? Yeah, yeah for the 16 point some kilometers. Half U plus V. I'm there, it is already. Yeah, okay, let me look at it. All right, let me just use paint. All right, any other questions for anybody else? All right, let's look at this formula. S is equal to half U plus V. Sir, this is you record this video before, um, upload this video before the, the test? I, I should. I uploaded the one from last week, so I'll upload this one as soon as I can. I'll try and upload it for the test, all right? Yeah, good talks. So, yeah, um, is Yannick, this is the end of the formula. Oh, a T again. Oh, yeah, T. Okay, mm -hmm. good. And we're comparing that to greatest height. Let's just break this down a little bit. Mm. U upon two plus B upon two T T what, what this finds is just average velocity, right? Average velocity and then multiplies it by time. It should work. So for greatest height, average velocity multiplies it by time. But what time did you use for this, right? For the greatest height, but time. Does the does the ascending height the um the, 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 the time for the oh so ascending, you work this um, part first? Yeah, I find it time first. Yeah, well, well, this formula is just like putting together the two formulas, right? This one here, not this one. It's like putting together these two, so it, it should work. But what a formula does is it finds average velocity, right? So when we average in velocity, let's say um, this here is a velocity, like a nonlinear velocity, we can take samples at specific points, right? So maybe V1, V, V2, V3, right? All the way down to Vn. And to average that velocity out, we do 
V1 plus V2 plus V3 all the way down to Vn divided by N, which is the number of samples we took. So, so in this case, they only take two samples and they divide it by two. So it, it's average velocity. It should work because it's, it's, again, it's linear, right? It starts from initial U and it goes down to zero, right? So it should work. I don't see any reason why not. Why it didn't work for the previous question, I'll have to check and tell you about. All right? Good. Any other questions? No? All right. So make sure you learn this question for the test, and it should be fine. It's not too hard. Um, pretty simple, actually. All right? Just your horizontal vertical components. You remember this from last semester. Remember to use the vertical one when you're dealing with height and the horizontal one when you're dealing with horizontal distance, okay? And that's it, that's all there is to it. You use the same formulas you've been using before, okay? Good, all right, so if you guys don't have any more questions, that's it, feel free to leave, okay?